Okay, everyone, so for today, on our second day of class, we're going to talk about the second social network on the agenda. So on the syllabus, I've got that we're going to look at Google+. Plus. Google+, Plus is the uh, social network we're going to focus on today. When we were here on the first day of class, I showed examples of um, Mashable. Mashable.com has a big presence online, and we look briefly at their Twitter account, their Google Plus account, and Facebook account. So we're going to use Google Plus today. So let's go ahead and open up your web browser. Open your web browser, and um, we will go to the address. Just as a quick, one more quick example, Google.com slash plus PMD Interactive. Let's try that address, that vanity URL. Um, one of the reasons I mentioned brief, uh, Peach briefly was because you might want to take your name, you, want, may, you might want to reserve your name before others do, since it's such a new network. With that nectarine.rocks, you will be able to do so. So you don't have to wait for the Android version and then someone else some other company takes it because they were they had an iPhone. But this vanity URL, uh, it's not a requirement, but it obviously would be highly recommended to have the same name on all the networks. Twitter.com slash PMD Interactive. Google.com slash PMD Interactive. Facebook.com slash PMD Interactive. Peach.com slash uh, PMD Interactive. So the same name on all networks if possible, because if not, you'll have to settle for other names, either adding a number onto it or an underscore or something, and then you're unfortunately hurting your brand a little bit, because if you are a certain name on every network and you're not that correct name or that name that you expect on a certain network, you might not get traffic to it. You might be giving traffic to the other, to the other um, name. The thing about Google Plus is that uh, we can have personal accounts or business accounts, as opposed to Twitter, where technically it's all one type of account. On Facebook and Google Plus and other networks, we can have business or personal. So if we go to this address, google.com slash plus, uh, the plus symbol, PMD Interactive, you will see our company's <coughs> account, you will see some branding, some text, info at the top, statistics and info um, button as well, and all of that. So this is another social network. You're going to see content that can get posted, pictures, text, links, just like any network. Um, Google Plus does not have the limitation of Twitter in that you have 140 characters. No, here you can write a lot. I don't know the limit, but for all intents and purposes, there's no limit. It's probably, you know, 10,000 characters or 1,000 characters, and even that's a lot to, to write. Most of the time, almost every social network has a preview, has a little taste of something. Facebook, Google+, Plus, Pinterest, everywhere. They've all got a taste of something, something to catch your attention, perhaps a picture, and then a link for the full content back on the main website example this blog post that we wrote about the top WordPress plugins part one you mention it but then click here to view the whole thing you go to the site you read that article maybe you like it enough to share it to your Facebook so it reaches more people maybe you like it enough and on the website we've got a feature that once you read one article it suggests why not read this one it might guide you to part two so you'll read part two you might like part two and you'll also share that one Best case scenario, after seeing everything that we're posting, you might decide to click on that um, request a quote. So whatever it is you're trying to do on your website could be accomplished via traffic that you get through your social networks. The more content you put out on the social networks and a, and a presence that you create, the more content that Google search or Bing search or Yahoo search or whatever can find you when someone is searching for WordPress developers in San Diego. If some of those keywords and such are within my social media, I might get found via a search and then 
best case scenario, hired. So you can explore that later on um, throughout the day. And then um, what we'll do actually, let's look on the left side. Do you see a menu? You've got home, collections, and join. Click on collections. We'll explore collections a bit more when we actually create the account. Click collections. This is sort of like Google Plus's answer to Pinterest. If you've used Pinterest, Usually there are square or rectangular photos, a, a grid of photos on Pinterest that you can then like and comment on, etc. Here's Google Plus. It's reminiscent of it, but it's, it's different in that each of these are basically like a little folder of content. Tor Ivan, Bo Boeing posted Norwegian landscapes. Patrice Christian posted Show Me a Sign. Gordon Lane posted compact camera reviews. So let's say compact camera reviews. If I not the follow button, but if I click on the thumbnail, so any one of these that you see, don't click the follow, just click the thumbnail. This will then show you that this particular person on Google Plus has an account. They have created sort of like a folder, a collection of content. Compact camera reviews. And he posts a photo, he posts some text, it might be the whole article or a link. Posted that five weeks ago, six weeks ago, etc. He's posting content on a regular basis. He's got a million followers of this one collection. His own account, I suppose, if we clicked on his icon, his own account also has about one million followers. We'll see the nuances of what I mean about followers, but there's about a million people that are interested. Every time he posts something to this collection, someone sees it. Best case scenario, I mean worst case scenario, they just read it, they interact with it. Best case scenario is they actually buy the product or hire him or whatever he's trying to do online. This is one of the strengths of Google Plus in that you can really specify you can create content for a specific audience. We'll see we can create as many of these collections as we want to target people specifically. For good or for bad, we have a lot of a lot of fragmentation online in that I can go look at what I like, look at more stuff that I like, find something interesting that I like, you know, focus. Um, channels on television. If I really like cooking, I've got like three or four channels of just cooking to focus on. If I like sports, I've got 40 channels of sports to look at. With social media, we have an audience that we can find, that we care about our topic, and hopefully we can reach them. So we'll see that we can post something. It can get likes slash favorites slash plus ones three different names for the same thing a like a favorite a heart a plus one they call it here a plus one google plus calls it a plus one when you like something facebook calls it a like um twitter was calling it a, a favorite on different networks it's a heart just some way to show some quick approval i like this i plus one in this on google plus this is at 56 56 people liked it. 56 people plus one did. Over here, 96 people plus one did. On Twitter, we could also share a tweet to more people. So we've got share right here. On Twitter, it was a retweet. On Google Plus here, it's a share. We talked about in Twitter that if I have uh, 10 followers, but if one of those followers has 1,000 followers, and she retweets it, I uh, potentially have reached 1,010 people because I've got, I got that retweet from that, from that connector, from that person who can connect me with more. Same thing here. So Gordon posted this, more people see it because that got shared seven times, four times, etc. Then we've got comments. This one does have a count, unlike Twitter. Remember I complained with Twitter that Twitter doesn't show the number of comments on it until you view the tweet completely? Here it shows you at a glance. This has got eight comments. Here we are scrolling. Four comments. 
as I said previously, the value of all of these interactions is this gives you a gauge of how effective your content is, but also these people here are the ones that are really interested in your content. Therefore, you can target them on social media more directly. Simon right here. Um, I could go to Simon's account, uh, follow them, interact with them, reply to them, just be active. It's the social and social media. When I log in, I would be able to see all my statistics, how many likes and who liked and who retweeted and, and all of that. So the purpose of that, to get the, those interactions, is to see who's really interested and to further try to get them more interested to buy or to subscribe or to go check out your art show or whatever you're trying to do online. We'll see how to use this once we set it up, and then we'll also see another aspect of Google Plus that I really like, that I think is much more effective than communities. At the moment, uh, I mean of um, collections, at the moment Google Plus is really focusing on collections, but there's another aspect that I also recommend us to focus on. We'll see what it is. But at this point, if you click on the Google Plus logo at the very top left, that'll just take us back to plus.google.com. And we've got join. The thing about this is if you've already got a Google account, this will let you join very quickly. How many of you currently have a Gmail account? Okay, we'll be able to get into this pretty quickly. If we don't, we'll be able to create a free account, a free Gmail account, so that then we can create a Google account. If you've already created a Google Plus account, you might have created it the wrong way. Because we have personal accounts and business accounts. And even though it makes sense that I click join and I start to fill in my company information, that's not the right way. That's the personal way. We want the business way. And there's a couple of ways to do it, so I'll show you one of the most straightforward ways, I think. And, and we'll see how it works. Even if you've already created a Google Plus account before, I recommend you create another one, just like I talked about with Twitter. Create another Twitter account so we can learn how it works and you can delete it later. You can create another Google Plus account here, learn how it works, we can delete it later. Let's click on Join Google Plus. And so either log in with your existing Gmail or click Create Account and that'll take you a few steps to create. So I'm going to pause for a moment, either log in, either sign in or sign up. Tell me over if you have any trouble. Once you sign in, then I'll show you what we're going to do.
知らなくてですね Is anyone having any trouble? You just need to sign in or sign up. So one of the one of the things that always is a little bit tricky to, to teach in a classroom is this this step of either creating an account or signing up. And what makes it doubly tricky in the last couple of sessions that I've taught this class is that very recently Google Plus has changed their interface. Uh, you know, when you upgrade your phone and suddenly all the buttons are different and such, Google Plus has done that recently. So some of you get the new design and some of them have the old design. If anything pops up ever that tells you, try the new Google Plus, make sure you select it. Because eventually everyone's going to use the new Google Plus design, we might as well use it now. So if, that, if you have that option, make sure you select the new Google Plus. I'll give you a couple more minutes to sign in and then, and then I'll sign in and we'll get started. Okay, so you may or may not be here. I need to move on, but you can catch up. So the concept here is that if you've got a Gmail account, you have access to all of these Google services. Gmail, Google Maps, Google Earth, Google Search, Android, Google Plus. So that's a big corporation. Google has all of these different branches. As I just said, Google Plus, Google Search, Google Maps, uh, Android, Google self-driving autonomous cars, all of that. So Google is a big company and therefore many of its aspects interlock with each other. For example, Google Plus. Um, whenever you do a Google search, sometimes you get a results page that, for, especially for a local business, where you see star ratings and such. All right, if I do taco shops near me, Google might give me something like this. 
this stands out and entices me more than these guys over here. All of these are taco shops too that I might want to go try out, like tacoshop.biz, but I might not even pay attention to them because I'm seeing some of these have star ratings, and some of these look really nice out here that they stand out on a map and everything. Well, that is related to Google Places, Google Plus, Google Business. It's this account that we can, we're setting up here where we can put our business, especially if it's a local business, we can put it on the map. We can get star ratings. Maybe you've already got a lo Google local account, you don't even know about it. Because like Yelp, anyone can create a location and then start rating. So I might never have thought of that, about this, but maybe I have already a business on Google Plus without me knowing it and people are trashing me on Google Plus or Yelp. Well, claiming the name on Plus or Yelp will help me deal with those negative issues because um, some of these star ratings that lower you, someone complained uh, it was terrible service today and I'm never coming back. Well, if you know about that, you can reply to the negative comments to hopefully turn them into positive comments because especially if you've got only a few amount of reviews, every negative one really affects you. Once you're getting to more reviews and even more reviews, a negative review is not going to be so bad in the grand scheme of things. When you've got very few reviews, 10 reviews, 12 reviews, 15, every one little review is going to hurt you. So we don't quite have a lot of time to talk about that nuance because not everyone has a local business to put on Google+, Plus, a local business. But we will all be able to put a business or an entity on Google+, Plus as we're starting here. We've created an account. Some of you had said upgrade, and some of you were simply logging in. Let's take a look at the very top right corner. Mine has my icon because I've already set this up. It's my personal account. It's got my name there. Click on your icon on the top right, and it shows this is my Google Plus profile. Below it, I have these various Google Plus pages, business pages. This is the big difference here. If you created Google Plus without knowing this, you might have, up at the very top right, it says, you know, John's Realty Google Plus Profile. And if it says profile, it's wrong. It's set up as a person, not as a business. We're going to need to make sure that on the top right up there, it says page, Google Plus page. The big difference there is the page is where we'll be able to see statistics. Where's our traffic coming from? We'll be able to get reviews and answer reviews. We'll be able to get on the map and all of that. If we have a profile, it's for people, not businesses. So that's one possible thing that you might have done wrong. We will be able to convert if it's profile into page. The cool thing is that once we set up a page, we can call Google and they'll answer. Uh, I've dealt with a client recently uh, this client right there, actually, we called them up at 11 p.m., they answered a minute later, and then we talked with them and they fixed it. So they do have real-life tech support that you will be able to answer, I mean, that will be able to answer your questions once you've set up a Google Plus page, a business page, because they want your business. As a personal profile, I don't see a phone number for personal. You can send them an email and then wait a little bit, and you might get a reply. But if you've got a business page, if there's a phone number that we'll see, we'll be able to call them, they'll answer. So what we need to do here, notice, I've got my personal account, and I can jump to different business pages. How many of you have any business pages already set up? One person. There we go. So we're going to set this up properly. Um, if you've got more than one page to manage, you're going to see all your Google Plus pages. But if you don't see that, we need to go kind of around the bend, um, it doesn't work to add account, unfortunately. You see a button that says add account, but that's not what you think. That's not about really adding a Google Plus business account. Really, it's, it's like, I, I wouldn't bother with it. It's not quite what you think. So, just to remind myself, yes, okay. So, there's several ways to get to it our business management screen 
use perhaps one of the most direct, the address, business.google.com. Make sure you're logged in, and then go to that address, business.google.com. And then also it might look a little different on yours than mine because I've already set up this account. This is always the challenge of, of doing this for a class. I've run out of emails to use to make up new accounts. So go to business.google.com, press enter. Mine will look something like this. These are business pages with location. So these are actual businesses that are, have a location on a regular, on a real address, a real street throughout the US or the world, I suppose. And then I've got a tab at the top that also says brand pages. These are businesses that don't have a physical location, but I can still create a brand. A, 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 I can also still create a presence on Google Plus. So on mine, that's what I see. Does anyone at this point see a map of the U.S.? Look at a couple of people's shoulders because again, this looks different for different people. All right, so what? Well, yes. All right, so here's the thing. Um, I have guided you, I've guided various people a little bit. What's going on here is you've gotten to a screen with a map of the US. What a, this is what I was showing. Some of you already have different businesses to manage. I mean, some of you will need to manage different businesses on a map like this. 
So you had gotten to a screen where there was a map, and that's what that screen is asking you. If you've got a business with a real physical address, you can then either claim it if it already exists, or create one right now. If you don't have a physical location, I'll show you what to do in a moment. But if I do have a, if I do have a business on 123 Fake Street, I can go here and claim it. The problem with that is it's going to ask you either for your business's phone number and then an automated machine will call your business, give you a code, and then you're supposed to put it on the screen. So if I was at the shop right now, I could tell it, yeah, call the business, I'll answer it, and I'll confirm. Because that's how they confirm it's your business, so that you don't steal the listing of your competitor. The other way that it can be done is it can send you something in the mail that takes about a week or two. So what I'm going to recommend, if you do have a real business with a real location, don't create it just now because you, you'll be able to do it faster if you're at the business to answer the phone. We're going to create just a regular brand page, which doesn't need to be attached to a location. And then we can delete it. Once we learn how it works, you can delete it and then do the real process of, of claiming the real location. So if you're here on the map, on the very top left corner, there's these three little items here. This is the menu. Click the menu uh, button. If you've got multiple locations that exist, you can view them. You can add a new location. And then we've got brand, add a brand page, or view your brand. So that's the one we're going to do, add a brand page. Before that, there's tech support. Here's where you can call them up. They do answer. Like I said, I called them up at 11 p.m. I wrote what my, help, what my question was. They called me back like one minute later. We got the question done on the phone. So up on the business.google page in the little menu here is where you're going to see the hidden, coveted, contact Google phone number. What we're doing at this point is we're clicking on add a brand page. Create your Google Plus page, page name, website, type of page. This is the name of your business. This can have capital letters and spacing, and I don't believe there's a limit to the, lamp, to the name of your to the length of your name. It's a really long name there. This name that you add here is not the web address. Remember I showed google.com slash plus PMD Interactive, my company. This here is not asking you for that name. That name, that URL, that address, we get it later. This is simply the name, like a regular human readable name. So that means you can use full words and spaces, uh, symbols, and everything. But what is the purpose? Is that the one if somebody search shoots that they change? Exactly. That's related so to I if want a company name. you want a, a real company name. Yeah, the name of your company. The, that's what people would be searching for. Yes. So maybe you answer this um, question before that can it be attached to many businesses? We can create more than one location, one more than one brand. Yes, we can create different ones. But it's not exactly that one is attached to many. We would have different pages. So um, Google Plus is attached to a Gmail address, right? Mm -hmm. And that Gmail address can um, Multiple businesses, yes. Um, I can't show it here, but a screen, one screen ago, what I showed was that, uh, yeah, my one Gmail here would have a list of many businesses. So I can have many businesses with one Gmail. So we'll look at this a little later. We can use one Gmail to manage multiple businesses. That would be to add more managers. We'll look at how to add managers in a little bit. Twitter, as we saw last week, doesn't have that. Basically, one email account creates one Twitter account. I did mention TweetDeck earlier today. That's a way around it. But Google+, Plus, we can have one Gmail manage multiple businesses, and we can have multiple people manage the one business. We'll see that. But here in the setup, I'm creating the name. If you've got a web address, put it in. If you don't, uh, that's OK. We can, we can skip that. But again, as I mentioned last week, 
you still want a website usually, not just a Twitter or a Facebook or Google Plus or Pinterest or Instagram, you still also want probably a website because that's where you're going to have your shopping cart, your sign up for my newsletter, my gallery, or whatever. Whatever you're trying to do online really is going to exist on your website and all the social media is traffic for it. So let's say I have a website I would add it in. Type of page, not too many to choose from. Product or brand, entertainment, community, other. Pick whatever fits. Probably you'll be fine with product or brand. Brand is just, you know, your company. If I'm Victor's Bakery, my brand is Victor's Bakery. If you don't feel any of these fit, you can do other. There's some terms in service. No one reads, but everyone agrees to. And, um, you need to as well because you can't use Google Plus without um, agreeing to the terms. So click create. It's most likely going to ask you for a phone number to verify because anyone can create a Google Plus account, especially the way we're doing it. And it wants to confirm with a real person so select either text, message, or voice call. Remember to mute your devices, please. The phone number doesn't have to be the business number. Just That's right. Number. That's right. It doesn't have to be the personal number. Is that the same for when you create a location, or does that have to be a landline? That one for the location usually is the landline, usually is the one attached to the business. This one can be a personal one. Can you then use a, a cell phone for the business? So you're like a. You know, I think so. And you don't really have like a home base, you just have the phone I think so, yes. Okay. Um, but you would still be create. You would, remember, we've got at a location or at a brand. If you add a location, it's because it's a location. So you want brand, and then that could be your, okay. your phone. So again, this might vary with people. I'll try to be as universal as possible, but if it looks very different than, than mine, you want to let me know. Eventually, if you do confirm, it took me to welcome to Google My Business, and it tells you what what this is good for, build your brand presence on Google Search and Google Plus, grow and engage your audience, understand how customers find you. That's one of the big important things about any online endeavor. Is this working? Where is my traffic coming from? Um, am I spending enough time or effort or money on bringing traffic? There's a tour here. I'm going to skip it because I'll show you my version of it. So click Skip Tour. you you get this um, this screen where you've got some sort of uh, pop-up info here reach the right people this is going to be um, this is going to be pushing their AdSense service this is the Google pay-per-click this is this is where you get these Google ads. This is where you get, where you pay some amount of money for your business to reach more people. And yes, it sounds cynical. I have to pay to reach more people. Yes, that's how it is on Google. That's how it is on Bing, on Facebook, on Twitter, on all of these nowadays. However, you still can reach a sizable audience doing it all for free. It might take more time. It might take more time or effort, but it's still doable if you go the free route. Eventually you're going to see here um, insights, you're going to see how much traffic you got, followers, actions on your posts which are the plus ones and the comments and such. 
So we'll be able to look at this in more detail later. We can link this to Google Analytics if you know what that is and set it up and see even more data. And then it's going to say start sharing on Google+. Well, before we do that, remember with Twitter, I had said I recommend that when we create a brand new social network, we want to fill in the profile as completely as possible and then post some content to no one in particular and then start to build an audience because if we try to start to build an audience early on we have nothing to show for it we don't have a profile set up I'm not going to inspire people to follow me with the generic icon I don't have anything about what my business is I won't inspire them to follow me and I don't have any content to show this is what we're about so we will take a time to do that first like Twitter last week Do you see at the top right you've got a big red edit button Click your edit button. Okay, I noticed this when I taught this previously also. There seems to be some bug at the moment. There's the old classic Twitter, uh, the old classic Google Plus, and the new Google Plus. We were to my knowledge at the new one right here and uh, when I clicked edit it told me why not go to the new one. I think this is going to cause a weird loop, so at the moment click no thanks. If you already click let's go, uh, I think you'll be okay, but click no thanks. And so here we've got various things that we can edit about our profile. We'll talk about what people is in a little bit. We'll talk about communities also in a little bit. We want to look at story. You see the red box, story, click edit. At the top, then you have these various things, these various circles. They're the same as these boxes over here. I'm currently editing the story, the tagline, introduction. These are these are places for us to write keywords and such to get found. When someone does a Google search, or even on Bing or Yahoo or whatever, and people are searching certain keywords, what I write here could be found by people that search but you don't want to think in terms literally of just keywords even though it tells you here they need to update this the 10 words that describe your page tagline so don't think literally write 10 keywords think of writing an actual sentence a human readable sentence a sentence that really explains what your business is and when people search so if I've got a business like PMD Interactive, I really need to use the tagline to say something like San Diego social media company specializing specializing in e-commerce. I need to say something that really explains the business if I've got a business with its name that doesn't quite make sense on its own. I'm doing fictional Victor's Bakery. That's kind of self-explanatory self what the business name is. But what I would still do here, for example, is family-owned bakery in the heart of Eastlake, California. Because there I've got some of these keywords. What if someone is searching for East Lake Bakeries? Bakery, East Lake. What if someone is searching for, you know, homemade organic cookies? Well, I could have put here uh, family owned bakery in East Lake specializing in organic baked goods. I'm thinking of these keywords that people could search for to find my business, and I'm putting them into a coherent sentence. So that I can get found. Yes. Does family owned have those two words? Uh, it would because then the search engine sees a dash as like a divider of words. So family owned. This tagline will be public to it to the world, so anyone on Google Plus could see that text. Anyone in a Google search could see that text. I've got then a box for an introduction, a longer spot here to write a few paragraphs if I want. I wouldn't worry too much about crafting this 
message here because this is not going to give you as much traffic as what you actually post. When you post once a week, once a month, once a day, whatever, that's going to bring you more traffic than what you wrote here, than what you wrote here a year ago. What's going to bring you more traffic is what you're writing, what you're posting once a week, twice, uh, you know, once every other week, etc. So it is useful to put in, again, a paragraph or so. You can do bolding and bullet points and links, but one way that I would recommend to use this, again, is write a little bit more of your biographical information of the business. Founded in 1899, Victor's Bakery. Wouldn't that show up on the post? No, it would show up on your About screen of oh, your account, of your, biz, of your Google Plus website. It has existed to bake the best organic family friendly fair. Blah, 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 etc. You're going to write some amount of text here that really explains what your business is about. You can get creative also because you have links. You can say exclusive Google Plus coupons. Follow us and save. And I can turn that into a link. So I, I wrote some text, I selected it, and I clicked link. Make that text a link. So here's one enticement for people to follow on Google Plus, to read the biography, we'll see where you would see it in a moment. But this is this goes toward answering the question that people always have. How do I get people on Google Plus if they're on Facebook? Do I need a Google Plus if I'm on Facebook? There's many answers to those questions, but the more places you are on, on different social networks, the more audience you could reach. There's people that don't like Facebook and spend all day on Twitter. So that's an audience perhaps that you're not reaching, so you get on Twitter. There's people that don't want to use Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest, but they love Google+. Well, you need to be on Google+. There is a lot of audience on all of those networks, and they do overlap to some degree. The demographics that I've seen is that the bigger demographic on Google+, seems to be male, tech-oriented people. So if your business is going after a male audience, if your business is going after a tech-savvy audience, Google Plus might be a good network to get on. Conversely, if you're looking for a, a female audience, Pinterest is the one with a strong female audience. So we're going to put content that perhaps appeals most to a particular audience to try to reach that audience more effectively. The introduction here can be set on the right side to public, extended, your circles, only you custom. I'll explain in detail what these things mean a little bit later, but I highly recommend to keep both of these public, meaning anyone can find them if they search. If you set it to one of these other types of privacy settings, not everyone would be able to see them. I want as most people as possible to see this text and find my page. Sorry, I haven't I haven't turned on to get my text. You can mute it. That's a I good know, idea. I, forgot, I had it turned off and then I forgot. All right. So here Whatever you type, then you can then save. You can come back to edit this as many times as you want. So let's click save. You can go into detail with this a little later, but I just want to show you this story. The other thing we want to take a moment to edit a bit is contact information. On this yellow box, if you click edit contact information, this again can be public or not, but I would say public most likely. 
and you can add a phone number, mobile phone, fax, pager, I suppose if you're being ironic, chat, and address. And so whatever you feel is a good contact method for you, I would add it. And what I would say about this is if you're not comfortable, let's say you've got that home business, that, that's, that small business you're running out of your home, and your main phone number is your landline to your living room. Um, and this is asking phone number, you can, you can omit that number, or what you can do is get a free Google voice number. Um, it's out of our scope at the moment, but if you research Google voice phone number, you can go get a free Google voice number. The only catch about that is that the Google voice number needs to attach to a real phone number. But what you can do is set it to voicemail, so you can create a free Google voice number, put it on your social media and such, and when people call that number, it goes directly to voicemail, and you have a message that says, thank you for contacting Victor's Bakery. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. And then you can answer them at your leisure. And I say that because if you're not comfortable putting your real phone number, you can get a free one from Google Voice. The address, and again, if you don't, if you don't want to use your home address, you've got a home business, one thing that you can do is get a P.O. box. You can do a P.O. box here. But sometimes people don't trust the P.O. box as much because anyone can get a P.O. box, any spammer can get a P.O. box. And I think the post office has changed their policy because I know mine in my area lets you put in the address of the post office. Like that. So instead of being P.O. Box, um, P.O. Box 223, Chula Vista, California, it's 830 Coon Drive, number 223. That looks like a much more real, legitimate address than another P.O. box. So all of this contact info is optional, but highly recommended, because if you're running a business, you want to instill trust. You want to have people, especially if you're selling something, you want to have people trust you and have some sort of contact info to reach out to you with a question, complaint, comment, kudos, Whatever contact info you want to add here, go ahead and do it and add. Save. And then there's one more box here, links. When we set the account up, it asked for a website, so I added it. But now I would have to verify it. And that's a little bit of a, of a process. We can't quite get to it in this class. It's a little technical. but this is going to have you set up with webmaster tools so don't do don't go through that we don't have time for it but if you do verify your address you will get that little check mark on your account remember we had that check mark on twitter and i said don't worry about trying to get it on twitter us little people really won't get it we can get a check mark on google plus to show that we are the legitimate business behind that name it's a bit of a process you can go through it, it helps you through it, but this is how you would create that check mark to be a verified business. What we can do at this point, if you click under links, click edit. Links, add custom link. You can add as many of these as you want, I believe. It asks for a label and an address. So let's say I've also got Twitter, which we do if we created one last week. Twitter, and then I can put my Twitter address here. I can put all the other competing networks here because someone might follow you on Google+, but then they're also a big fan of Pinterest, and you've got a Pinterest account, so that link there would send them over there. And here is another place to be creative. I can do this. Even though I did it on the About, I can also do this. Um, exclusive coupon newsletter. That's the text that will be clickable. And then on the address, I can put in, this obviously needs a more setup, but I can put here a link 
I can put in a direct link to a page on my website to guide people. I can write get exclusive coupons and then a link there. That'll be an active link to guide people. That's known as a landing page. Whenever there's a website, a web page on my website that I direct people to via social media, via an email campaign, via my business card, if I'm directing people to a specific page that they can only get to that page that way, that's a landing page. They've landed on a specific page <coughs> with specific special content. Usually a landing page you cannot get to from the, from the main menu. I visit a website and it has about, contact, by. It doesn't have anything about newsletter. I have to get to the <coughs> newsletter via the special link. That requires obviously that you've got that page set up and exists on your on your site, but this is one powerful way to use this links. A little out of the box, have it point to a landing page. I'm going to save that. And again, we'll come back to what people is and communities. We'll come back to that. Any general questions on this screen? One thing that I, yes. So you could do Facebook, Twitter. This isn't linking the sites. One's not going to feed the other thing. This is just people who come here and click on that and they go to your Twitter site. Yes, exactly. Unfortunately, none of these social networks anymore really feed each other. They used to. You used to be able to post on Facebook and it would go to Twitter when they were both younger. Now that Facebook's so big, Facebook doesn't have to care. So it, it removed that capability. Google is so big, Google Plus is behind Google, uh, Google is behind Google Plus, it doesn't care to link its contact over to Twitter. So they're all in competition. There's some networks that do let you feed from one to the other, but they're usually the smaller upstart networks that are trying to build an audience. <coughs> this is simply a link from this profile to the other. One thing that we need to get used to now, on the very top right corner, it has the name of my business. Remember at the beginning of the day it had my name and my picture. Uh, my picture can be edited right here. If you hover over your logo, you can add your picture. I don't have my company logo. I have to do this when I get home. But that's where I would add my company logo and a cover image here for more branding. Those are also two things you want to do before trying to attract a lot of followers because then you'll also see it on the top right corner. That's how you'll easily be able to tell what business am I managing. I'm posting the wrong thing on the wrong business. So it says here, Google Plus page, with the Campus default, it's Google page, it's showing these pages. These are the pages that I'm managing, and I can have as many as I want. So at the top right, if you get lost, make sure you look at the top right. Which account am I editing? Because you might have logged in and first you were on a bit, uh, you were on a personal account like that, and I'm starting to post stuff about the business. Wrong page. Um, the terminology also very subtle. Victor Campos Google Plus profile. Victor's Bakery, Google Plus page. Do you see that? You see how subtle that is? If it's a business, it will have page. If it's personal, it will have profile. So that's one indicator that they're different. Yes? Can you change your profile to a business status? I believe so, but the easiest way I would recommend to get into touch with tech support with their phone number there because um, there's a lot of data to transfer over from that account to the new account. So I would I would call them up. I would contact them. And like I said, they've got that phone number up on the top left corner. Contact. Yes. How do you get rid of the old page that you have and build a new one? If you build a new one. A little bit later in the day, I'll show that to everyone about how to delete an account because we can create many. And then, like this one, I, I don't, this is not a real page, I want to delete it. I'll show how to do that a little later. 
Um, what we'll do is we'll look at a little bit the anatomy of Google Plus and then we'll take a break. Uh, but what I want to do first is again this is this is the bug that I'm seeing at the moment. There's the new design and the old design. Right now suddenly we're in the old design. If you don't know why I can tell that, don't worry, you're going to see it in a moment. Um, we're in the new design. I mean, we're in the old design. If you hover your mouse over this menu item, Google Plus page, if you hover your mouse over, it'll pop up to say these different things. Click on stream. I'm trying to... I'm trying to have it suggest to me to go to the new Google Plus, which it is. I went to stream and it says meet the new Google Plus. Let's click, let's go. So sometimes you'll be in the old one, sometimes you'll be in the new one. Try to be in the new one as much as possible because eventually the old one's going to go away. Whatever you're doing on the old one, the screens and such are not quite the same. So you want to learn the new one. So did everyone see a let's go? If you didn't see it right away, you might want to switch to a different screen, and somewhere there it'll keep bugging you about it. So click Let's Go. Here's the new Google Plus. The colors look a little different, the style's a little different. Does everyone see the, the big red bar at the top? That's one of the giveaways that we're in the new Google Plus. So we'll be looking through most of these screens today. Home screen is where you're going to see the latest content right now because we've got a brand new account. Uh, probably it shows trending on Google Plus. So you're going to see these posts from these different accounts that I never followed. I don't really care about, I don't know, photography or that sort of thing. Cartoons, I, I don't care. I want to follow stuff related to what my business is about. So because we've just created a new account, there are no connections, so it's just showing us what's trending. Similar to Twitter, I said last week, we're gonna have a brand new business page, we're gonna follow accounts so that we can see what, what's trending, what's popular, inspiration, the competition. So at the moment it doesn't know what we want, so it just gave us a bunch of trending stuff. But the home screen is where we would see the latest content of who I'm following, either customers or other companies. So home always takes us back to this screen. We've also got collections. Remember, that's one of the screens we had seen previously. Collections. We'll look at it in more detail later, but collections could be valuable because we saw that there were collections with a lot of followers. We can create collections. We'll talk about that a little later. We've got communities, which are related to collections. These are also valuable. We'll come back to that. We've got profile. Go to profile. This is another place where we can come back to edit the profile to change our information. In the new Google Plus, it's not as intuitive because you have to click this little info about me. And then it goes back there and so forth. But here, profile. This is the this is the business account and again here's the literary terminology. I said a little while ago that a personal is a profile and a business is a page, didn't I? And here the terminology themselves, they're tripping themselves up. They're also calling a profile even though this is my business page. So it's got a little bit to fix up there. But I know at the very top right corner Google Plus page. This is my page, my business page, even though it says profile here. But this is what people might see as soon as they visit my account. If I edited these graphics, they would see my branding. If I've posted anything to collections or regular posts, they'd see my stuff here. And at the moment, my web address on Google Plus is this at the top. plus.google.com slash gibberish. This is the thing about Google+. Plus. You cannot choose your short name, your vanity name, like on Twitter, right away. I showed you earlier, google.com slash plus PMD Interactive. When we started our account, 
we had google.com slash blah 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 like everyone else but you can claim your name once you start to use google plus post stuff you know be active i believe for two weeks and then google plus says okay you're serious about it let's let you get your name so you're it's not going to let you claim a name right away because then any spammer could claim any name it wants you to post stuff use Google Plus, be active for a couple of weeks, eventually you'll log in and you'll get a nice bar at the top that says claim your name. And then you'll be able to claim your short name. Because right now we've all got gibberish as our address. It's still an active link. You can still copy and paste this into an email. You can still tweet it. You can still put it on your business card. But it's that huge name, unmemorable. You're not going to be able to change it until you use Google Plus for a bit. Yes. If you're trying to do uh, several social media sites at once or roll out of a business, mm -hmm. you don't really want it out in the public until you're ready to do it. But you want to have the correct name. Can you post privately or just create a small circle that you post to? Will they recognize that? You can do that. You can set your Twitter or Google Plus or anything to private, yes, mm -hmm. and, or to the small circle. And you can be sharing to those small circle of people or nothing just keep it private so that when you're ready to go public put it public and everything's active uh, let's go over to people click on people these are your connections these are your following and your followers at the moment it says find people suggestions no suggestions just because you haven't really used Google Plus it doesn't know who to suggest to you as we start using it and we and it sees that we're tweet uh, that we're posting a lot about technology it might start to suggest technology enthusiasts if we start to use it and we're a realtor and we start to post a lot about realty and property and such it might start to suggest users to us that are into that as well to make connections they could be potential clients customers we will see following these are the accounts on Google Plus that my page is following and the thing about Google Plus that in the beginning might be confusing but then you'll see how powerful it is is that you can organize your following into circles which are basically you know folders you can or groups you can organize who you are following into circles so we've got these default ones the generic following these are all the accounts I'm following you can put those that you are following into the customers circle. You put them into the VIPs circle, team member circles. You can also create circles. This is new circle. What you can do here, think about this use case scenario. Let's say I've got a uh, pet shop and I sell pet food. I'm going to sell cat food. I'm going to sell dog food. I'm going to sell bird food. Obviously the cats don't want bird food and the birds don't want cat food. So when I post sale this Saturday on bird food, I want to send that post to the people that care about birds. So I can create circles here, bird people, cat people, dog people. You know, when we post something, we'll see. We'll send that to the bird people. Only the bird people can see it. We can add a customer to many circles. Maybe they are a bird person and a cat person. That's probably a fun household. And so we can put them into both of the circles, birds and cats. And when we post something here, we can send it to both those circles. Uh, and both of those groups of people will see it. So I like this a lot on Google Plus because we can really target our posts to those that would care. Again, it's posting content to an audience that would care so that they care, so that they are most likely to follow through. If I post the same thing to everyone, I'm not reaching specifically enough people that really care. We'll create circles in such a little layer. But I'll say right now, the cool thing is the users that you add to these will not know the name of the circle that you create. So if you need to create a circle called annoying people, mm -hmm. you can. And once you add those annoying people here, they won't know that. They'll just know you've connected with Pictures Bakery. They won't know that they're in the annoying people circle. So 
So I guess it's not so complicated. If you have an idea for like one extra circle, you can create it. You can simply call it. This is going to be gluten-free aficionados. Aficionados. Close. Aficionados. 1F. Okay, so you can create circles. These are going to be the people that you are following to organize them, to send the message directly to those people. We can send it to many people, of course. We can send it to specific circles and people. And then later on, we'll see we can send it to friends of friends. We'll see why that matters in a little bit. We've got settings. You can explore that on your own, but I would recommend you go there. Like when I mentioned with Twitter last week, you want to look at the different settings in Twitter to see, for example, why am I getting so many emails? You can go look at that here as well and turn things on or off if you don't want the various settings. Feedback and help. And then classic Google Plus. I wouldn't worry about classic too much. They're going to remove it eventually. Who knows when? But I've been using Google Plus since 2011 or so when they first released it. I really like it personally. It's my favorite social network. I get a lot of activity there. I might have mentioned last week if I post the same thing on the big three Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, I usually get the most activity on Google Plus because we're going to talk about this targeting, sending it to the right people. So let's go back on home, and then uh, we'll take our break. We'll, uh, if you'd like to look at these other settings, you can. We're going to take a break until 7.31. Make sure we're all on the same page. When we come back at 7.31, we'll post something and see the nuances of posting on Google+.